Hey folks, this is Damien from Southpaw Designs, and today we're going to take a look at 10 handy tools that you can find on Amazon for under $50 each, with many of them being under 20 bucks. These are all tools that I own, I paid full price for, and are not sponsored by any company. I include them on this list simply because they've served me well, and many are products that may be overlooked in some shops and other videos. So let's get started. This handy moving blanket. Do I really need to film some B-roll for you to understand how a moving blanket works? Let's cut to the chase. I bought a few of these for use throughout the shop to prevent wood from being scuffed on my janky workbench uh, and when moving furniture. Uh, I looked around local thrift stores in my area to find some old blankets just to have around the shop. And then I ran across these handy mothers on uh, Amazon for $18 a piece or a pack of four for 36 bucks. They're 80 by 72 inches. So it's a very good size. In fact, I believe that's king size. Um, and $36 for a pack of four, they're a great deal. It's actually one of the first tools that I bought when I started setting up my shop and is currently priced at $30. It's a mini pocket hole jig. If you happen to be new to woodworking, pocket hole joinery is a great way to join corners because it allows the screw to go through the wood fibers at an angle, creating a stronger joint than just going in at a 90 degree angle. Pocket holes are visible, but can easily be filled with dowels. You can even use different species of wood for your dowels, so you can actually turn an attempt to hide the screws into a decorative feature of the piece. Now, I typically prefer to use a full-size pocket hole jig when possible, but if you're trying to drill pocket holes into large pieces of material, it's difficult to hold it in place. This handy mini uh, pocket hole jig is inexpensive and portable so you can move your jig to the workpiece instead of having to move your workpiece to the jig. This particular kit comes with a few screws, two size driver bits, a drill bit, and a handful of dowels. The jig itself even has a handy magnet making it easy to pop into your vise or onto a clamp. Craig also has a version and if you watch many other videos on YouTube, you'll probably see that version all over the place. But I went with a slightly cheaper brand, and I like it. Regardless of whether you go with this brand or another, this is a very handy tool to have in your shop. And uh, now that we've gotten to know each other a little bit, you know what I really appreciate? I appreciate that subscription uh, right down there below. I'm really trying to build up this channel, and as you can see, in just over a month, I've reached 760 subscribers, and I'm really trying to build this up. Your subscription tells me that you appreciate what I'm doing, and it also tells YouTube, so they help get the word out more when they see that people are engaging with my channel. So subscribe, leave a comment, like, share, buy me a beer, whatever you like. The next item on the list, this five pairs board carrier. For the first year of building my shop, I'd unload plywood from the back of my truck, slide them onto the floor just to get them into my shop. To say it was a hassle is an understatement. I spent $25 on this handy tool, which allows you to simply slide it on, grip and lift plywood, melamine, drywall, or MDF board. It's self-adjusting, so it can be used for anything up to one inch. It's got a comfy handle grip, and is advertised to be able to hold up to two boards at once for up to 200 pounds, though I've never actually tried that. To show how easy it is to use, check this out. Now, I'll admit I'm pretty strong as it is, but the simple fact that I can lift an entire 4x8 over my head should show you how easy it is to use. It's not going to make a sheet of plywood any lighter, but it will make it much easier to handle and move on your own. It's much less awkward. Next is this handy thin rib jig that I actually showcased in a different video. This jig is designed to allow you to rip thin strips on your table saw or band saw, but I've actually found it useful to uh, resaw boards on my table saw. I only have an eight and a quarter inch uh, DeWalt table saw, but I can still use it to resaw boards up to about five inches, which is great for small projects like coasters, jewelry boxes, cigar boxes, and such. If you're interested in learning about that, click on the link right up here in the corner or in the description below. To use it to rip thin strips, simply slide into your miter slot and then tighten it down at your preferred depth. This creates a consistent distance between the jig and the blade. With each cut, you can push the rip fence tight again, making each strip cons a consistent thickness. 
And as always, make sure that you're following all necessary safety procedures. But one thing that I like about this jig is that you can actually control your material without getting anywhere close to the blade. Now, there are more accurate thin rib jigs on the market and you get what you pay for, but I found this easy to use. There's a little play in the miter slot insert, but I make sure to press the rip fence tight, which eliminates that play. Alternatively, you can wrap a piece of tape around the insert, which will help you hold it tight. Whether you choose to use this particular jig or not, I highly recommend having one. This is a very handy item to have in your shop, and I reach for it often. And just so you know, all these items are linked in the description below. Please be aware that I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you do plan on buying any of these, I'd appreciate it if you'd buy through those links. I get a small kickback, which helps to support this channel at no cost to you. Next comes a two for one, these Japanese pull saws, which if you've watched many woodworking product reviews on YouTube, this handy tool has probably come up. I love this saw. With a pull saw, the cut comes on the pull instead of on the push, which makes cutting by hand so much easier. Because you're cutting on the pull, it requires much less energy and leaves a nice clean cut with little effort. I was first introduced to this tool in a different video and decided to give it a shot. Try cutting with this blade as opposed to a tradi traditional handsaw and you'll notice a big difference. Now this particular saw has a nine and a half inch blade with a rip blade on one side and a cross cut blade on the other, which makes it a great two in one tool. There are other sizes and variations on the market, including this five inch blade, which is great for smaller jobs, cutting dowels and such. Uh, there are also other sizes such as dovetail blades, uh, so you can really go down a rabbit hole with these types of blades. And it's also a nice feeling to reach for a hand tool to accomplish a task. Um, makes me feel a little bit more fulfilled and like a real craftsman. Relax, it was a joke. I know you don't have to use hand tools only to be considered a craftsman. Next comes this handy marking knife. Wooden pencils can dull, leaving thick and inaccurate marks when you need precise measurements, especially on smaller projects. And mechanical pencil leads can easily break, but a marking knife is both accurate and strong. It's flat on one side and beveled on the other, so you can place the flat end against your board, rule, or square, and you'll get a tight and accurate mark. Once you've found your measurement, simply make your mark. You want to make sure that you make a light pass at first, and then go back over it a few times to go deeper and really cut those fibers. Not only does it give you an accurate line, it also gives you a starting cut, meaning that you can use it to drop a handsaw blade into it, helping to further create an accurate cut. With just a pencil mark, your blade would be more likely to drift to one side or the other. Another nice feature of this particular marking knife is that it's double beveled, which means it's easy to use for southpaws like me. This next tool is great for cabinet making, box making, and any time that you need to create uh, joinery at a right angle. I find them especially handy when using pocket screws, which have a tendency to drift if you don't have your joints clamped down tight. Now, even though these are a pretty shade of crimson, they're not that premium brand that you might be thinking. I chose not to spend $130 on a pair. I paid $28 for this set of two, and these clamps have served me well and I have no complaints. I typically use these for cabinets and for boxes, and if it happens that they're off by a tenth of a degree, I've never noticed. Of course, once I join all four corners, they pretty much correct themselves. To use them, simply clamp onto your corners. I recommend clamping both ends at once. You'll notice that you can clamp either on the inside or on the outside, which comes in very handy. Once they're in place, simply join away. Next, we have the simple spring-loaded center punch. It's great for marking specific points to start your screws. Simply make your mark with a pencil or marking knife, then use the center punch to line up the divot exactly where you need it, then press till it pops. In softer woods, you really don't even need to pop. It's sharp enough to make that simple dimple. Once you have your dimple, then you can start your screw in that exact spot for more accurate drill holes and screws. The handy thing about this particular type of center punch is that since it's spring-loaded, there's no need for a hammer to make your dimple. You just press and pop it. Now, it's advertised to work with wood, plastic, metal, and glass, though I've only ever used it with wood. This particular brand is solid metal and sturdy, 
priced at about $14 for a set of two. I've seen others priced higher and they might, they might be a better quality, but once again, these have served me well. And finally, painter's tripods. There are a variety of these simple tools around, but they're a simple, handy accessory to have in your shop, especially for small items. They're not fancy by any means, so you can probably figure them out. These tripods sit under your workpiece when you're painting or staining to keep it off your work surface so there's no chance of sticking. I found several different options on Amazon with different prices, but these come at a cost of around $16 for a pack of 10. Now, I haven't tested out any of those other cheaper options, so I really don't want to compare what I haven't actually used, but these are sturdy and hold heavy weights. Now, I haven't tried to drive my truck over them or anything like that to see if they'd hold. Dang it. But they're sturdy. Also, uh, they're interlocking in case you need that. So, those are 10 things that have made a difference in my shop. Let me know in the comments section below what items that you can't live without in your shop. I'd really like to hear uh, because my wife don't think that I spend enough money in my wood shop. And with that, have a good one. Bye.